Hello and welcome to highlights of the 1990 Canadian Grand Prix, brought to you by Micropose and GP2 Joey. We're in Montreal, on the banks of the St. Lawrence River, for round five of this most captivating of Formula One championships. Held on the majestically sweeping circuit de Gilles Villeneuve, named after Canada's most famous racing son, the venue promises to deliver drama, excitement and close action for the anticipated 150,000 Canadian crowd. After finally winning a race for the first time two weeks ago in Monaco, Martin Brundle will be hoping to continue his superb start to the season for Arrows Ilmore, with the British driver sitting on top of the driver's standings, with Ferrari's Ayrton Senna ahead of the McLaren-Honda pairing of Nelson Piquet and Alain Prost, with the Arrows of Johnny Herbert 5th and Nigel Mansell 6th. It's McLaren who lead the team standings, with Arrows in 2nd and the mites of Ferrari in 3rd. In the news leading up to Canada, Ligier sacked the veteran Michele Alboreto and for a returning Joey Davis, cautious words for his team boss were not enough to stop a few dramas and spins in a private test session at Imola. Rumours began circulating that his pace was a worry to the team and elsewhere Davis's replacement for the first four races, Mark Blundell, was soon confirmed in Alboreto's seat at Ligier, the Englishman now required to pre-qualify. Onyx was said to be nearing the end after a poor season and the battle to keep out of pre-qualifying was intense with Brabham dropping into it and Joas Racing gaining promotion in their first season in F1. Following his move a stand-in at Williams to a rolling full-time drive now with Ligier, Mark Blundell turned his first ever laps in the car and was sensational, going fastest by over two tenths of a second ahead of the impressive Dallara of Andrea Di Cesaris and Oscar Larari in the Euro run. For Blundell's team though, it wasn't enough as Eric Comas was a massive two and a half seconds off the pace and that meant that Ligier once more were out as Minardi, Dallara and Eurobrun were the only teams who progressed into race qualifying and this led to a visibly angry team boss Guy Ligier to confirm that Comas could well follow Michele Alboreto and the team's former designer out the door before the next Grand Prix. Returning after his lengthy recovery, Friday afternoon's first qualifying session saw Davis easing himself back into the swing of things and improve as the one hour session progressed, visibly grappling with the low speed understeer and high speed oversteer nature of the relatively new FW13 Williams chassis. The two time winner was the early pace setter until as seems customary this season, Senna took to the track in the glorious Ferrari 641 V12. It wasn't long before the 1988 champ was quickest and despite Piquet's attempts, the Brazilian ran out the fastest overall at the end, with Davis taking third ahead of an impressive Herbert in fifth, whilst Prost, Gerhard Berger and Mansell all seemed to be struggling for pace, whilst others like the Eurobrun of Larari and Roberto Romano in the Joist really impressed. A Grand Prix winner two weeks ago in Monaco, Brundle was really struggling to find a good setup in the Arrows, and on Saturday fared no better as his car struggled for grip in the medium speed turns. As ever, Senna was on it and better this Friday time and looked certain to take his fifth consecutive pole of the year until the Williams of Joey Davis appeared. The 25 year old Brit had obviously found something in the car setup overnight and blasted across the line to take the provisional pole. He then went out a little later, but a right rear puncture at over 100 mile an hour pitched the Williams into the barriers, and it was a delight to see its hapless driver emerge unscathed. Senna went back out to try and regain the pole in the dying minutes, but was unable to go any faster, and that meant we had a new pole man this year. It was a sublime performance from Davis, who silenced many who had questioned if he still had what it takes, who was nearly a second faster than Mansell, his teammate, whilst at the rear, both Minardis failed to qualify. Naturally, Senna was not happy to have lost the pole and he publicly questioned the legality of the Williams car, whilst Davis immediately rebuked the claim. It wasn't enough though as both Ferrari and McLaren protested the result and called on the FIA race stewards to check the car, who later confirmed its legality. Down at Williams they were surprised at the speed of the number 6 car, whilst Mansell proclaimed his surprise at the gulf between himself and his teammate. So it's Davis on pole with Ayrton Senna in second. Nelson Piquet is third. Johnny Herbert lines up an amazing fourth with Alain Prost fifth. Gerhard Berger takes sixth. Mansell is seventh. Brundle is eighth. Patrese is ninth. Nanini is tenth. John Alesi is eleventh. Then it's the two Lotuses of Martin Donnelly twelfth and Derek Warwick thirteenth. It's Ferrari in fourteenth. Moreno fifteenth. Guzman is sixteenth. Nakajima in seventeenth. Capelli is eighteenth. Bernard is nineteenth. 
Thierry Bootson is 20th, De Cesaris is 21st, Leto is 22nd, Suzuki is 23rd, Dalmas is 24th, Tarquini 25th, and it's Emanuele Piro in 26th. The revs are up, the red lights are on, and the 1990 Canadian Grand Prix is go! Davis is off to a good start from pole position, but look at PK and the McLaren. Nelson PK is up to second place as Senna drops to third, and Herbert, Johnny Herbert's up into third as Senna goes fourth. So into the first turn, it's Davis ahead of PK, Herbert, Senna. Berger in fifth, Prost is sixth, Brundle is seventh, it's Mansell in eighth, Nanini is ninth, and Patrese drops a position down into tenth place. Into the right and the left hand of it's Davis. He's over a half a second ahead of that McLaren now at PK. And I suspect that it's not going to take too long before PK's on the back end of that Williams. Let's have a look as they go through the right hander again now. He's fully on the throttle out of third gear, up to fourth, up to fifth gear. The track is bumpy. You've got to be very careful with your braking under the bridge there as Davis goes through and he's into the right hander. He still has now gained a tenth of a second ahead of PK, but on the run down to the hairpin, I suspect that PK, he's really going to be giving it a go. Let's have a look. PK, he goes to the inside. Is Davis going to block it? He does. Davis takes the defensive line once more into the right hand hairpin. But let's see how good the acceleration is from that Renault power. Look at that. The Williams is well away from the McLaren, but it's the top end range that the McLaren Honda really starts to come into eight. And here comes PK. He's going to be on the attack. Is Davis going to be able to defend? I don't think he is. PK goes to the inside. PK's going to take the lead into the chicane. He can't. Davis just defends and chops across the front of the Brazilian. Fantastic defensive drive. And then he's on the attack again. And Davis. Davis just cuts across PK very calmly there. And I think that was quite legitimate. And let's not forget that he, uh, he last year he was under some question and actually got a two-race ban, which he didn't actually take because of his testing accident for his overly aggressive defensive driving. So this year, Davis has got to be very much on the mark here. And PK again, he's on the attack. Is Davis going to go defensive? I think he will. He does. Into the chicane. Davis just takes the inside line for the right and the left-hander. And the through they go again to complete the second lap. And PK is going to go again. But Davis will just simply just take his driving line. And look at Gerhard Berger. Berger got the momentum on PK, who had to get massively out of the pedal, out of the gas, and so does Senna. So the two Ferraris have got ahead of PK, who's now dropped down into fourth, he's down into fifth place as Johnny Herbert passes him as well. Terrific start from the two Ferraris, have really got aggressive on their attack as Nigel Manson passes one of the uh, McLarens, and that was Alain Prost, a tri quite tremendous pass. And Prost is now on the attack on to Edson Senna, and Senna! Senna's going to go for the inside, can't do it. Prost goes through, so it's Alain Prost now up into fourth place. Davis is still your race leader ahead of Gerhard Berger and Johnny Herbert. Let's see if Gerhard Berger's going to make a move now. I think he's got the momentum he has. Gerhard Berger, is he going to be able to find a way through? He does, so Gerhard Berger takes the lead at the end of lap eight. Davis is going to be really struggling now to keep that arrows behind him of Johnny Herbert because the Ilmore power seems to be quite a bit more than the Renault at the moment. And Herbert takes second place ahead of Davis, who just lets him have it. So it, it looks as though Davis, is he going to be able to keep on the attack with Johnny Herbert? I'm not sure, but Johnny Herbert's had a very inconspicuous first four races this year. And Davis is on the attack again. Herbert, he's going to try and stick it around the outside and he's off. He's off. Herbert, oh! Ouch! He's been hit by Prost and Senna. Senna's gone straight to the back of the arrows. And Senna is out. Herbert, Prost and Senna all out with one crash. That's quite extraordinary. I'm not sure what happened to Johnny Herbert as Bernard and Larari go through. Let's have a look on board with Senna and you can already see that Prost has hit him and then Senna's got absolutely nowhere to go, creeps into the back of that stricken arrow and all three of them are out instantaneously. Well this has really turned the race on its head now with Gerhard Berger still out in front. It's Davis in second and Nigel Mansell is up into third place and let's have a look at Joey Davis now, he's really on the attack behind the, the Ferrari of Gerhard Berger and Davis, Davis has lost it coming out of the turn spin but he's managed to regain it. Incredible bit of reactive driving there from the 25-year-old British driver. It's still PK third. Mansell is now fourth ahead of Martin Brundle with Nanini in sixth and Alexi is seventh in the Tyrrell. Let's have a look at the replay from Joey Davis. You can see he just clips the inside curb. He knows better than that. That's a bit of a rookie error there. He knows that that curb is particularly vulnerable to drawing the car into the right-hand side of the track. Let's get back out there for the action. It's Gerhard Berger. He's coming up to lap. Looks like Tarquin. He's AGS and he's through. Coming up under the bridge now into the braking area. Gerhard Berger with a 7.3 second lead over Davis. PK is still third with Nigel Mansell charging behind that McLaren. And Martin Brundle. Well, what can you say about Martin Brundle? He's really struggled this year as Gerhard Berger. Berger's into the pits, it looks there. We thought something might have happened and 
Oh my goodness, there's Martin Brundle. His engine's on fire. Martin Brundle, the race winner from Monaco, he's not going to finish this race. He's out. There's flames billowing out. And that's Gerhard Berger, the race leader after his pit stop. Gerhard Berger pulls over to the side. His engine is spent. Oh, what tragedy for the Austrian who looked like he had the race in the bag today. Berger is out. That's quite extraordinary. And that means that Joey Davis has inherited the lead. Ahead of Nelson Piquet with Nigel Mansell now into third place in the second Williams. And Alace is fourth. And Roberto Moreno is fifth for the Joas Racing. Patrese's ninth. It's Leto tenth. And you can see that Patrese is all over the back of one of the Lotuses there. That's Martin Donnelly. Is Patrese going to be able to find a way past the Ulsterman? This is really going to be trying for the Ulsterman. He's got to try and keep that Benetton forward behind him. But I don't think he's going to be able to do it. Patrese pulls out from, the, uh, from behind Donnelly there. And he's through on the inside. Great bit of driving from Patrese. Fantastic. As Roberto Romano up into fifth place. He's going to try and chase down Jean Alessi. Well, Moreno really impressed in his standing races last year for Williams. And he's try he looks as though he's doing it again today as Nelson Piquet now. He's on the attack. He's going to try and get past Joey Her Johnny J Davis. But Davis just takes the inside line. He defends once again. This is great driving from Davis. He's got to be mindful again that he doesn't overreact too much to the driving, to the defensive driving. And Piquet's really trying to close in on him. And this is enabling Nigel Mansell to close up on the two of them. Joey Davis into the first turn. He's still got the lead. And it's through the first sector that Davis has really seems to have an advantage over a lot of the drivers this weekend. They're on the blast up to turns four and five. The right and the left sweeping turns. Piquet is through. Mansell. He's less than a second behind his Brazilian rival, but Davis is still only a tenth ahead as PK locks a break going into the turn. And PK is really trying, he's on the outside, but Davis is just going to hold it round the outside as they come up to lap Nakajima's Tyrrell. Davis still managing to stay ahead, he's half a second to the good. Mansell's third, it's a Lacey fourth and Patrese's fifth. We've got to look to see when these cars are going to start making their pit stops soon because we're anticipating that it's only going to be a one-stop race for most of them. Patrese in fifth with Donnelly sixth. He's having a really good race and he's going to be hoping that for the Lotus they're going to have some very strong reliability this weekend after some poor races. Moreno loses a place to Maurizio Guzman and he's lost a place now to Derek Warwick. Has Moreno got some sort of a technical failure? We're not sure. We'll have to see if there's anything that can be done about that. But it, at, at the moment, and that's PK. PK's going for the lead and he's off. PK's off at turn one and he's off. He's onto the grass and he, he stalled it. He stalled the engine. And is PK going to be able to get it going again? I don't think he is. I think PK could very... He is. PK's out. Nelson Piquet's lost it under braking. He's stalled the engine. And the Brazilian is out of the race as Nigel Mansell's on the attack to his teammate Joey Davis. Look at this. The two Williams, they're side by side into the first turn. Davis really laid on the brakes and he just about manages to keep Mansell behind him. But who's going to be coming in first? Is Mansell going to opt to come in? It's Davis. Davis is in first for his pit stop and that means that Nigel Mansell's got one or two left to really put the pedal to the metal and try and gain some track position on his teammate. The two of them, they've not really been two good friends even though Davis has been off for quite some time. But there's a bit of a real needle between the two of them as Alacy is in third place. Is Alacy going to come out? He does. Alacy, he's ahead of Joey Davis now and Alacy is in second place in the Tyrrell. This is fantastic. But what's Nigel Mansell going to be able to do is Patrese is up into fourth. It's Donnelly fifth. Nanini in sixth and Derek Warwick is seventh. Mansell's into the pits now. It's going to be interesting to see how good a speed the Williams team are going to be able to, um, to get him service now as he's into the blocks. There's a little wipe of the visor from the chief mechanic there, Mansell. Let's see how long he's going to be stopping. We think it's going to be about nine and a half seconds. It's a little bit longer than that. It's 10.8 seconds. Well, and there's Davis. Joey Davis is just past the Lacey and he's going through over the start finish line. But Mansell's done it. Mansell's got ahead of Joey Davis. Fantastic. Let's see if he's going to be able to keep the lead now as they come down to the hairpin. Joey Davis, he's really on the attack now. And I'm not sure if Nigel Mansell's going to be able to keep him behind him. And they're coming through the sweeps as they go alongside the St. Lawrence River. Let's see if Davis can get in the slipstream. But Mansell's Williams is very, very fast over that section. We suspect that Joey Davis is running a little more wing than his teammate, which makes him faster through the corners. And let's see what happens here as they're coming up to lap the AGS and one of the LaRusses as well. 
Nigel Mansell is going to have to really try and defend himself here very well against Joey Davis because Davis is really going to be trying to get past him as soon as he possibly can. And Davis runs wide. He's run wide there, but I think that was quite intentional because he's got a much better drive out of the corner. And Mansell now, is he going to lose position behind the ATS? Let's see. It's Davis. He's swarming all over the back of his Williams Renault teammate. As Davis goes for the inside, and Davis takes the lead ahead of Nigel Mansell. What a fantastic manoeuvre. He completely took Mansell by surprise. He did not anticipate that. And Joey Davis now, he's got to try and get a little bit of distance between himself and Mansell as he goes past the ATS. And he's through, and that means that Joe, no, Nigel Mansell's had to drop a little bit further back as Mansell comes up to the final chicane. And Mansell spins. Mansell's lost it. He's into, he's into the wall, and he's collected Sean and Lacey. The two of them are out. This is quite incredible. What a race we've had. Accidents are plenty as Nigel Mansell is out. He lost it under braking and then just travelled across the gravel trap into the wall and he collected Jean Alessi who was a hapless passenger had absolutely nowhere to go and the two of them they are out of the race and that means to say that Joey Davis is now ahead of Ricardo Patrese and he's and, and Davis has had some sort of a failure he's been pitched into the barriers I think he's had some sort of a puncture as he was coming up to lap one of the Joey's racing Porsches I suspect He's going to have to come in. He's coming in. Well, what a place to get it because that means he is going to lose the lead to Patrese. But he's trying. Look at this. He's really struggling to get the car into the pit lane. But he manages to get in there. Patrese takes over the lead for the Benetton team. Fantastic stuff. Nanini's up into third place. Nakajima's fourth. It's Warwick fifth. Donnelly is sixth as Davis is getting serviced. Moreno seventh. It's Guzman in eighth with Larari in ninth in the Euro run. Dalmas in tenth. And Patrese is in for his, single, his second stop of the day. Patrese, is he going to lose the lead now to Joey Davis? Let's see what happens here. The Benetton team, a wipe of the visor there from the mechanics. Let's see how long his tyre stop's going to take. It's going to be about seven and a half seconds. 7.7, .7. that's a very good stop. And here comes Joey Davis now. He's going to take over the lead. He's got Patrese behind him. It's Nanini Warwick ahead uh, behind Nakajima as Martin Donnelly is in sixth place. Look at this, two Lotuses in fifth and sixth. What a fantastic day for them. But are they going to be able to keep up the reliability that seems to have plagued them all season long so far? There they are, there's Derek Warwick. He's got Martin Donnelly right behind him. This is going to be a fantastic result for the Hethel-based team in the UK. And, and there's Joey Davis. His engine's gone. The race leader, Joey Davis. Patrese goes past and Davis is out. This is quite extraordinary. All the front runners from the cha Drivers' Championship, they are all out of the race so far. Ricardo Patrese is going to take over the lead now as he goes over the line. One of the LaRusses goes past. Nanini takes second place and Davis is out of the race. What heartbreak. But look at this. It's the Italian Ricardo Patrese. He's in the lead. He's just got to keep it going now. He's got another 12 laps ahead of him. Alessandro Nanini. This is going to be a fantastic day for Benetton as well as the Lotus. And there's, and there's Derek Warwick. Derek Warwick's pulled over. His engine's on fire. He's out. Derek Warwick is out as well. This is extraordinary. Martin Donnelly's third. And that means to say... And there's Maurizio Guzelman in fifth place. Guzelman's engine has gone. Is anybody going to finish this race today? This is extraordinary. Eric Bernard is now going to be up into fifth place. With Suzuki, his LaRouche teammate, in sixth place. As Patrese comes through the final corners. And Ricardo Patrese, he's across the line to win the Canadian Grand Prix. Fantastic drive. What a performance from the Italian. And it's Alessandro Nanini. He comes through the final chicane to take a Benetton. One, two. What a day for those guys. Fantastic result. And here's Martin Donnelly. The Lotus boys, they're on the pit wall. They're going absolutely crazy as Martin Donnelly comes across the line to take his first ever podium in Formula One. What a race. So it was an incredible first win since the 1983 South African Grand Prix for Patrese and Benetton's first since Mexico 86 in what had undoubtedly been one of the strangest races in quite a few years with many crashes and failures resulting in only seven cars finishing. There was delight up and down the pit lane at Patrese's well-managed race win and Nanini was obviously delighted with his second place but it was Donnelly who was beside himself with joy at his first ever podium after a difficult start to the year that had seen him retire from all of the previous races. Davis was left to contemplate just how fine his return might have been and Senna Lamb busted Herbert for causing the lap 10 crash that eliminated them both and Alain Prost. There's no change in the driver's standings as the top four all failed to finish, but Patrese now sits fifth, 
nine points behind leaders Brundle and Senna. And in the Constructors' Championship, there's no change, but Benetton are now fourth after their 1-2 and are ten points ahead of Williams. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time for round six of the 1990 Formula One World Championship in Mexico.